Welcome to our info session on the postdoctoral fellowship of the Marie Skłodowska Curie Action, short MSCA. My name is Isabel Spüler and I'm one of the MSCA national contact points in Switzerland. In this video, I will explain what the MSA postdoctoral fellowship is all about and also who can actually apply for this funding. And as the Swiss national contact point for MSA, I will also explain which option is still open for applicants with a Swiss host and what it means if you are a researcher with a Swiss nationality interested in applying for MSA fellowship. Before we enter the world of MSA, let me introduce your research in few sentences. So we at your research provide information, advice and guidance on the European Research and Innovation Programme Horizon Europe. Our work is funded by the Swiss government and all of our services are free of charge. Your research is a network with offices all over Switzerland. The national contact points are at the network office in Bern and have to focus on the details of a specific call within Horizon Europe. And the advisors in the regions have a broader view on different funding opportunities. They can support you best in questions related to the implementation of a grant at a specific institution in their region. So for this reason, I want to encourage you to get in touch also with the EU Research Office of the region of your future Swiss host and to receive their input on your MSA Fellowship application. So now let's enter the world of the Marie Skorowska Curie actions. There are actually five different actions or funding programs within MSCA. The MSA Postdoctoral Fellowship is the most internationally known funding scheme of all five actions. Every action has a focus on a slightly different objective and career stages of the researchers. However, they all share the following values. Excellence in research and innovation, knowledge and skill development, and all actions are open to all domains of research. And they want to foster the dimension of Cripple I, international, intersectoral and interdisciplinary. We can therefore summarize that all Marie Skorowska Curie actions support researchers from all over the world at all stages of their careers with a focus on their career development by funding excellent project ideas, but also the development of new skills and mobility across national borders, sectors and scientific disciplines. As I said, there is no predefined topic in the MSCA core and funding is provided to all domains of research and innovation. So now let's zoom into the action you are interested in the postdoctoral fellowship. The main objective of the postdoctoral fellowship is to financially support excellence in research and the career development of postdoctoral scientists. It is very important to keep in mind that you should not only have an excellent project idea, but also a vision for your career inside or outside the academia. The training plan you describe in the proposal should align with your vision as much as the choice of the supervisors and the host. So now when we zoom in even further, we can see that there are two types of fellowships, the European Fellowship and the Global Fellowship. So the European Fellowships are open to researchers moving within Europe or coming to Europe from another part of the world to pursue 
their research career. So in this fellowship, uh, the host is in a European member state or Horizon Europe associated country and can last between one and two years. So you choose depending on the project. Researchers of any nationality can apply for the European Fellowship. On the other hand, the Global Fellowship lasts between two and three years, and the first one to two years are spent in a so-called non-associated third country, followed by a mandatory return phase of one year in an organization based in a European member state or associated country. So in this extended fellowship, there is actually a restriction that only nationals or long-term resident of the EU member states or Horizon Europe associated country can apply. Um, <clears throat> with this, I want to introduce now three major eligibility criteria for applicants. So the first one says applicants need to hold a PhD at the call deadline in September. The second one says one should not have yet spent more than eight years in research at the call deadline. And very important, you should comply with the MSA mobility rule. And I quickly repeat here what I said for the European Fellowship, the nationality doesn't matter. However, for the Global Fellowship, you need to be a national or long-term resident, meaning five consecutive years spent in an EU member state or associated country. The mobility rule is a key feature of the MSc Postdoctoral Fellowship. It says that the applicant should not have lived or worked in the country of the host for more than 12 months in the three years before the call deadline. And every day counts. So the rule is referring to both your residence and work contract. And for the Global Fellowship, it is important to mention that the mobility rule applies to the outgoing third country. Additionally, there is one last rule to consider if this is not the first time you apply. You cannot submit or resubmit a proposal if your application in the previous year had a lower score than 70%. So please check your eligibility to apply very carefully. And if you are in doubt, you can always contact us or the MSA national contact point of your future host country. Now that the rules to be eligible are clarified, I wish to introduce two additional possibilities this fellowship offers. The first one is the possibility of including secondments. And the other one is to add a so-called non-academic placement. First about secondments. You might be thinking of doing some research visits or field work, but the MSc Postdoctoral Fellowship also supports skill development through so-called secondments. A secondment is a well-defined training activity with an additional supervisor and you choose any research institution within or outside academia anywhere in the world. You can define whether you want to go simply once or several times during your fellowship and you are free to set the length as long as it does not exceed more than one third of your fellowship time. It is not mandatory at all to have the continents included, it's an option, but they add a well-defined training activity to your Marie Curie Fellowship. So the second option is to prolong your fellowship duration by adding six months of non-academic placement at the end of your fellowship. The host of the non-academic placement needs to be established in an EU member state or Horizon Europe associated country. You are of course free to combine both options or not to include any. What is important is that you describe the added value of these options already at proposal stage. So 
what do they actually contribute to your career development and your uh, research project. So now you might be thinking, okay, I understood the scientific and career related benefit of this fellowship, but what do I get financially? So you can find all the numbers in the recently adopted work program. The MSCA provide funding with so-called unit costs or person months, and you don't need to predefine a budget for your specific fellowship. And depending on the country of your host, your family status and the length of your fellowship, your total budget for the fellowship will be calculated automatically. And your monthly gross salary would thus be the living allowance of 5,990 euro multiplied by the so-called country correction coefficient. And this is for Switzerland 1.638 plus the mobility allowance of 710 euro, plus the family allowance of 660 euro, if applicable. And in addition, your host institution would have 1,000 euro per month reserved for your research training, including networking costs. And this amount can also be used for secondments. And 650 euro indirect costs for the management is also given every month to the institution. However, you won't see it yourself. So keep in mind, for the Global Fellowship, the time in the outgoing phase would have one country correction coefficient and you would have another coefficient for the return phase. I think for the moment this was now enough with numbers. Please check the details in the work programs or in our online tutorial. I will now address um, for the application with a Swiss host. Switzerland is a so-called known associated third country and still has to negotiate its association to Horizon Europe. The implications are the following. It is not possible to apply for European fellowship with a Swiss host. It is only possible to apply for a global fellowship where the Swiss host is the outgoing host and you choose a return host in a European member state or associated country. So when we recall the eligibility rules, it means for a global fellowship, you need to be national or long-term resident of your EU member state or associate country. It is thus not possible to apply for a global fellowship with a Swiss nationality. The mobility rule also applies to the outgoing phase, so you can't apply for a global fellowship with a Swiss host if you have spent more than 12 months in Switzerland at the call deadline in September. So because the European fellowship with a Swiss host has not been possible due to the Swiss situation as a non-associated third country, a transitional measure with the Swiss postdoctoral fellowship call of the Swiss National Science Foundation has been put in place in the last years and it is expected to open again. However, for questions related to the SNCF Swiss postdoctoral fellowship call, please contact the Swiss National Science Foundation directly since they manage this national call. So if you're still interested in the MSA postdoctoral fellowship call by the European Commission, I would like to now introduce the most important documents and the support we offer. So the MSA postdoctoral fellowship call for proposal 2024 has opened on 23rd of April with a deadline on 11 September 2024, 5 p.m. Brussels time sharp. You find all the official documents, the work program, the guide, the template, at the funding and tender opportunity portal. This is also the website where the proposal submission will be done. So once submitted, the research executive agency will start the evaluation process. This means three experts of your field will be chosen and they'll read your proposal. 
They will evaluate and agree on a score for each of the three award criteria, excellence, impact, quality, and efficiency of the implementation. And then your proposal will be ranked depending on the overall score. In February 2025, next year, you will be informed whether your proposal will be funded or not. And the earliest starting date would be around May 2025. But you can also postpone the starting date until September 2026. So now that you have the most important information, you might want to start drafting your proposal right away. In the last minutes of this video, let me briefly present what support and services we offer for your proposal writing. First, in July we offer twice an online applicants training for those researchers preparing a global fellowship with a Swiss host. We also do offer proposal review on a first-come, first-served basis for applications of the Global Fellowship with a Swiss host. In addition, we offer a so-called online tutorial. In this tutorial, you will find videos where we discuss different parts of the proposal and what should be considered in the writing process. Anyone applying for the postdoctoral fellowship coming or leaving Switzerland can get access to this tutorial. Please create first a your research account, write us an email indicating us your current or future Swiss host and we give you access. Now, independent of your hosting country, you find supporting tools by the NCP project called MSCA Net. So the MSCA national contact points from different European countries publish together a handbook with advices for each section of the proposal. The handbook is expected to be updated for this year's calls in June and July, so please check the MSCA Net website where you can actually also find additional supporting material for the PF call or the matchmaking platform if you're still looking for a host of your fellowship. I share now a lot of information about rules, facts and numbers. However, I would like to emphasize that the MSA Postdoctoral Fellowship has been an amazing opportunity for young researchers with a great impact on their lives. And I would like to finish here the video with an inspirational story of two fellows. One of them is Jacopo. He did a European Fellowship at the ETH Zurich, applying several years ago when Switzerland was actually associated. His supervisor, who encouraged and supported him in the application phase, was actually a postdoc Marie Curie fellow himself in the past. And just a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to interview Madalena, who is currently a global fellow at the University of Bern and soon moving back to the Czech Republic at the Charles University in Prague. And you find the recording of our interview in this YouTube channel. I hope that you will find inspiration in their individual Marie Curie stories. And I wish you all the best in the proposal writing phase.